Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Online Soapbox Church. Today, we're going to be hearing from our brother Moses, and the title of his topic today is The Springboard to Your Next Victory. So our first question is, Abraham is known as a father of the faith. How did he challenge the hopelessness of the situation he was in? Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Lenore, and thank you everyone watching right now. I'm happy meeting you again over God's word. And um, before coming to to you to the to your question, Lenore, I have this scripture that came in my mind this morning, uh, and it comes from the book of Psalms, Psalms one or three, verse two, where David say. O oh, my soul, give thanks unto the Lord. Forget not his benefit. Uh, that word has been a blessing this morning in my life. Now, Lenore, coming to, to Abraham, and even we look at the situation Abraham was in, I would like you to, to read to us uh, the scripture in Romans, in Romans chapter 4. Um, verse 17 to 25, please don't know. Sure, thanks Moses. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The words it was credited to him were written not for him alone, but also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness, for us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Thank you, Leno, for that beautiful reading. <clears throat> um, you can see the situation that Abraham was in. This man was actually very old, past the age of bearing children. His, uh, his wife, Sarah, the Bible described her as being barren. And God had spoken to them while they were actually in that situation where there was no hope, telling Abraham that he will have children or he will be the father of nation. It was next to impossibility. But now Abraham tells us something very beautiful that despite the situation he was in, he purposed to believe in God. And my viewer, when I, when I read in Hebrews, in Hebrews 11 verse 6, the Bible says that without faith, there's no way we can please God. And the Bible continues to say that when we come to him, we must believe that he is, and he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So in that hopeless situation that Abraham was in, he purposed to believe in God. And number two, as you've read, Lenore, he purposed not to be weak in faith. 
many times when we are in a, in a, in, a, in a difficult situation majority of people majority of christians uh they tend to 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 comply with the situation at hand they see themselves already defeated with the situation at hand when you see yourself going in that direction just know that actually you are becoming weak in your faith but we can only say you are becoming strong in your faith the way Abraham was when you are agreeing with God. And we can say like Abraham, what God has promised for sure, he is also able to perform it. The Lord has said and the Lord will do it. That is the faith we should have as we enjoy or as we yes. experience this life. And uh, the problems surrounds us. Sometimes uh, you can have healthy issues. You can have financial issues. There's so many things that tend to challenge our life. But thanks be to God who has given us the faith. And the Bible say this world has been over, 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 overcome by the faith we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. So, my viewer, let us be strong in faith like Abraham. And let us hold on to what God has told us. Because he has told us, when we believe, it shall come to pass. Thanks, Lenore. Thank you, Moses. Abraham was also a worshipper. So, Moses, what is worship all about? Yeah, good question, Lenore. And uh, uh, let us see what Abraham called worship in Genesis uh, 22, verse 5 to 18. So now you can read to us. Sure. <laughs> he said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife as the two of them went on together. Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide and on this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Uh, thank you, Lenore. Um, there's that place where Abraham is telling the two servants to stay where they, uh, they, they were so that Abraham and the son Isaac 
were to go to a place of worship. Now, that is where now uh, we have to understand what worship is all about. Now, my viewer, when you look at Isaac, Isaac was actually the son of promise to Abraham. And uh, Abraham delighted in his son. Isaac was like everything was in him. And removing Isaac in the life of Abraham was like doing away with Abraham. Because all the promises that God had told Abraham was actually to be fulfilled through the generation of Isaac. And now look at now God coming to Abraham and just testing Abraham. Now you have to sacrifice your son. And because Abraham had faith in God, he believed God, he agreed with God, and he was willing to offer Isaac. And now we are told that when they are they, they were on uh, on 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 mount on, on a mountain, and I like the answer that Isaac provided. Father, we know there is a fire here. There is firewood here. And where is the sacrifice? But Abraham answered, My son, the Lord shall provide. Of course, deep down in the heart of Abraham, knew that Isaac, how I wish you knew, you are the one to be the sacrifice. Yes. So uh, when they read there, and God saw, that actually Abraham was about to, to, to sacrifice his son. It's like God intervenes. The angels speak to Abraham, say, Abraham, Abraham. You see, that, that second time of, of calling is like Abraham was actually 100% going to, to sacrifice his son. And God said, stop it. Now I know that for sure you love me. It's like, Abraham, you are ready to lay everything on the altar for me. And that one, my viewer, should give us the meaning of worship. Laying everything is like you are laying all of your life on the altar for the sake of your maker. It's like being a st in a state whereby it is only God who is standing in your life. That is the meaning of worship. There was what Abraham hoped for wa was actually in Isaac. And now you can look, you can see that God is requesting Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, to sacrifice Isaac. What kind of obedience was that? And that thing touched God and God intervened. So when we purpose to worship God, as the Bible say, in truth and in spirit, God will always intervene our situation. God will always manifest in our life. And God will always give direction in our life. And for sure, we will remain with the testimony of God. Just like Abraham said, for sure, God will provide. Thanks, Lenore. Thank you, Moses. Um, can you give us some examples in the Bible to prove that God sometimes brings to our lives different extremities without necessarily destroying us? Yeah, I, I like that question, Lenore. And I'm very sure the children of God, majority of us, we have been in such a situation uh, or we have seen things happening in our life and uh, we, have been, we have remained actually faithful uh, 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 to God even in our difficult uh, situation. Uh, some who had no uh, uh, knowledge in that area gave up and they left the faith, they ran away. But thanks be to God, 
uh, uh, who always strengthen us. Even the midst of challenges, we have actually, God has been helping us uh, 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 to move forward. And you know, we have examples in the in the in the in the in the, in the Bible. And uh, Paul is a despair of this. Now, when you look at what Paul went through or what Paul is telling us in Second Corinthians, is amazing. And 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 you know, I want you just to read to us Second Corinthians four, verse eight to nine. Sure. We are hard pressed on every side but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Yeah, and that is what literally happened to, uh, to, to Paul when he was uh, in one of the, city, uh, one of the cities um, in a city called uh, Lystria. Uh, you remember in Acts 14, uh, verse 9, when God used actually uh, 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 Paul and his companion to perform a miracle. And uh, the Bible says that because of the jealousy of the Jewish, they start up people in that city of Lystria and they stoned Paul. They stoned Paul. Look at that suffering. And now, of course, the Bible encourages us that we better suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Now, Paul was actually doing something good. He was testifying or he was witnessing the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And God actually was using Paul in a mighty, in a mighty way. So that is a, that is a that is one 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 area that we find that actually even God allowing us to be to the extreme of our life, being stoned, when actually maybe we hope that God will, will intervene before the occurrence, but you realize that it is happening in our lives. It's happening in our lives. And, uh, and uh, my viewer, something... stoned and dragged around is the same place that actually uh, 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 Timoth got saved. Timoth got saved. So sometimes when you find that our life is is being manifested in the life of other people. You see, our suffering is bringing even life to majority the children of God. As much as we may be suffering for doing good, but let us be encouraged that we are touching people's life. It can cost us. It can cost our life. But what we will leave behind, it will remain forever. And uh, Leno, I want just also to, uh, to bring to, to my viewer, to this attention, what happened to three young Jewish boys? Uh, that is Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. When they were before the, the, the King Nebuchadnezzar, and I like this, because King Nebuchadnezzar wanted the three Jewish bo uh, boys to worship the, 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 the golden image. And even Nebuchadnezzar went ahead and threatened them and say. If you are not going to worship I'm going to throw you in the furnace or in fire because these three Jewish men they had faith in God they had known God of course they they had heard the stories about their forefathers telling them about God they said let it be known to you Nebuchadnezzar we are not going to bow down. We are not going to worship this golden image. We know that our God is able to deliver us. And then they added something very interesting, my viewer. They declared, and these people are the people who have purpose, that there's nothing will separate them from the love of God. 
from what they have experienced or seen God doing in their life. They told Nebuchadnezzar, even if God will not come to rescue us, let it be known to you, king, we will not bow. And then that thing, of course, uh, made Nebuchadnezzar to be very, to be very uh, uh, angry. And the, the Bible say that even the fire of the furnace was doubled seven times. Look at that situation. And maybe the three men were thinking, okay, God will intervene before we get ourselves in fire. But you see, even God allowing the three men to be thrown in the fire and God intervened, intervened. And the Bible say, even in the midst of that fire, even the hair, their hair was not even burned. Even the smell of smoke or the smell of fire was 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 a was, was was not on them. You can see how God, the far God can take us. We can go through suffering, but God cannot destroy us. But at the end, we experience the victory that God intended us to to experience. So. Uh, we have uh, we have uh, 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 so many examples in the Bible where the the, the children of of, of 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 God, the people of God, went through a lot. Just the intention of God being that we may mature in Him, we may grow in Him, and we may also become tough and even be strong in our faith as we face this life that God has given us. The cool thing is that. The victory has been assured to us. Amen. The victory has been assured to us. Our end is good. Our end is so glorious. The Bible say that what we are going through right now cannot be compared to what awaits us. The glory that awaits us is amazing. So let us keep on. Let us have faith. Let us continue praying to God because we have seen him dealing with his people in the Bible, not necessarily destroying them. Even if they went through tough time, God did not destroy them, but God gave them even life in abundance. So that is it, uh, my viewer. God will take us through circumstances, but God is faithful. God will rescue us. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. God bless. I mean, thank you for that, Moses. Uh, just while you were sharing on that point, it made me think of uh, Matthew 16, uh, verse 24 to 25, that says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. And okay, now the context of, of that scripture is more about, um, you know, being an obedient to, to God and, you know, giving up the things that we want in this life. But, yeah, just listening to you and just hearing you share those, those brave men of faith that were willing to give up all, like their literal life, and to the point that even if, if God did not spare them, they they had the hope. They had that. They truly believed in that hope that they would be resurrected and and the joy before them. They were they were happy to um to sacrifice that. And that is just a huge challenge to us, isn't it? To to think about where our faith is really at. Like when it comes to the crunch, would would we really be prepared to give all? You know, to give our life. Um, and may it be that that's always um, our heart. So Moses, many times the children of Israel were reminded to remember the past mighty works of God in their lives. For what reason was this so? Yeah. Sorry, Moses. Okay, Leno, thank you for that. Uh, there's some um, internet problem here. Yeah. But I hope everyone is hearing me. Yes, yeah, so um, it's okay. So uh, maybe before 
you can come again, Lenore. Yes, so I'd asked you the question, Moses. Many times the children of Israel were reminded to remember the past mighty works of God in their lives. Mm. For what mm. reason was this so? Wow, wow. That's the question I was waiting for, Lenore, uh, because it is something actually that uh, I apply in my life every day and God has helped me. You see, you, we as human beings sometimes, uh, you remember I said by the reading Psalms 103, verse 2, Oh my soul, forget not the benefits of God. There's a lot that God has done in our life. Um, uh, some of us, they have testified that actually God has... Um, God has intervened in their situation. They have seen the blessings of God. That is the testimony they are telling us, and that is what touches uh, the heart of God. So God, many times the children of Israel were reminded not to forget the mighty works that God did in their lives. And you, you find that one of the reasons why God delayed the children of Israel in Egypt is because of the, the miracles that were actually going on in the land of Egypt. Because God was not only looking at the children of Israel, but God was also looking for the nations surrounding uh, 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 Egypt and even the Egyptians themselves. That the world will know that there is God of Israel, the only true living God. And people will hear about this about what I have done in Egypt, and for sure they will know me. So in our life, it's not that God has not done something in our life. It's not that God has not blessed us. God has done so much in our life. But the problem is that we, we, we do forget, especially when we are in a, in a, in a difficult situation, we forget that God has has at one point delivered us. So God wants us to remember what he has done in our life before to be a springboard to our next victory. Lenore and my viewer, look at what David is telling Goliath. He's telling Goliath, when I was taking care of my father's sheep, the bear came, the lion came, and I destroyed them. So I believe that you, Goliath, the Lord God who helped me to kill the bear, to kill, to kill the lion, is the same God who is going to give me victory right now. And that's why David tells Goliath, I come to you in the name of the Lord. So God wants us to remember his work he has done in our lives. So that when we are in our current situation, we can tell the situation that God has been my salvation. And that's why at one point God told the children of Israel, when they were in a difficult situation, he told them, be still and know that I am the Lord. You see, we can only reach at that level when we are being refreshed in our mind what God has been doing in our lives. That is the thing that the enemy even fear. That's the thing that will make us strong. And that's the thing that will make us to face the situation boldly and declare that situation that you are not going to pin me down. You are not going to make me feel like God has never done something in my life, but I'm going to hold on on the promises of God. Because what God has told me, or what God did in my life, is convincing enough that even the situation beforehand is nothing before my God. So my viewer, let us not forget the goodness of God in our life. It builds our faith and it makes our faith to be strong, to fight 
in this life God has given us. Thanks, Lona. Amen, Moses. So how great are our testimonies in relation to our enemies? Wow, wow. Lena, let me allow you to read Exodus chapter 15, verse 1 to 19, please. Sure. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and rider he is hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has hurled into the sea. The best of Pharaoh's officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The deep waters have covered them. They sank to the depths like a stone. Your right hand, Lord, was majestic in power. Your right hand, Lord, shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you threw down those who opposed you. You unleashed your burning anger. It consumed them like stubble. By the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The surging waters stood up like a wall. The deep waters congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy boasted, I will pursue. I will overtake them. I will divide the spoils. I will gorge myself on them. I will draw my sword and my hand will destroy them. But you blew with your breath and the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who among the gods is like you, Lord? Who is like you? Majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders. You stretch out your right hand, and the earth swallows your enemies. In your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed. In your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. The nations will hear and tremble. Anguish will grip the people of Philistia. The chiefs of Edom will be terrified. The leaders of Moab will be seized with trembling. The people of Canaan will melt away. Terror and dread will fall on them. By the power of your arm, they will be as still as stone until your people pass by, Lord, until the people you brought pass by. You will bring them in and plant them on the mountain of your inheritance, the place, Lord, you made for your dwelling, the sanctuary, Lord, your hands established. The Lord reigns forever and ever. When Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought back the waters of the sea back over them, but the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground. Wow, 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 wow. How sweet is the word of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just want to, to say something here. That uh, this might works of God in our life is our testimony. We testify about it, that God has done. And by this testimony, as we read somewhere in the book of Revelation, that by the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ, the enemy is defeated. So look at what you have read, Lenore, the song of Moses. And we'll discover that Moses is singing that song immediately after the children of, of Israel had crossed the Red Sea. And it's like things favored them. The enemies were swallowed in the Red Sea. You see, the same Red Sea that the children of Israel passed safely is the same Red Sea that the Egyptians died. And that when Moses looked at that mighty works of God, he composed a song. Look at that, my viewer. He composed a song. And he sang unto the Lord. I have seen now God intervening. And now even what God has done for us, 
has gone ahead of us. The enemies will hear about it. The Philistines will hear about it. The Moabites will hear about it. What God has done in our life, our testimony will speak on our behalf and the enemy will give way for us. The enemy will melt away because the enemy will see us as the army of God. My viewers, sometimes I tell, I tell those who listen to me that let our testimonies go before us. Let what God has done for us go before us. Let the enemy hear about it. They will tremble. They will melt away because they will see us as an army of God. And that's why, although these words were actually uh, applied to our Lord Jesus Christ, where the Bible say, touch not the anointed one of God. We are the anointed one of God. We are anointed in our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are anointed in our Lord Jesus Christ. So we must be strong. We must be strong. The enemy knows that we are winners. People can mock us. People can, can separate themselves from us. But that one doesn't reduce us to nothing. So long as we know that God is on our side, who can be against us? That's how great God wants us to remember the things that he has done in our lives, to use this as a, as a testimony. And our enemies, there's no way they will de deliver us, or they will defeat us. When we have this knowledge, we will experience victory in every day of our life. Let me stop there because it's like, I can continue talking about this, talking about this, because I know this is the knowledge that all of us must have that God has for sure favored us. Uh, I have so many examples. No, let me stop there. You can go to the next question, please. <laughs> uh, thank you, Moses. I just love your your heartfelt, genuine passion for the Lord. It's it's really inspiring. Um, so we have a final question for you today. What yes. touches you the most to be convinced for sure that God is the promise keeper? God is the promise keeper. There in, Moses. in the land of bondage. Yes. Can you just start again? Because it just froze quite bad. Can you just start your response again? Thank you. Oh, okay, okay. So I was saying that um we are still talking about the children of Israel, and I want us to 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 prove that actually God is the promise keeper. Uh the children of Israel are in, a, in Egypt, the land of bondage. And the, the Bible say that when they went to Egypt, their, their forefathers died. Most of them died. And uh, uh, this now young generation that has no direction in the land of Egypt, they were multiplying and they were becoming a threat to Egyptians themselves. Am I being heard? Yes, you are, my sister. Uh, oh, good. It's okay. It's okay. Now, Joseph stands and calls the children of Israel. You come, come. He calls them. And Joseph tells them that uh, now, you are a new generation. I'm about to die. And it's like, there's no hope when I look at you. There's no hope that for sure God will, will take you out of this. But I want you to have hope that one day, even if I'll be no more, 
one day the Lord God will visit you, will come to your rescue. So Joseph left behind that hope that God of their forefathers will visit them in Egypt and will lead them to the promised land. My viewer, if you want to find this, you can read in, um, in Genesis chapter 54, the, the, chapter 50, the last chapter of, of Genesis towards the end. That's, that's the time now Joseph is giving his last word that even if I die, the Lord God, the, the God of our forefathers will remember you and will come to visit you. So I want you to rest in that hope and for sure because God is a promise keeper. We are told that God remembered the children of Israel by sending Moses to go and rescue them. We serve a God who remembers us, my viewer. God is able to remember us and, and, and God is, is able to visit us. He can visit us and when he visits us, our life will never remain the same again. He walks in our midst and he touches our lives. He transforms our life. So that is the place where I feel that uh, uh, that actually God is the promise keeper by sending Moses, fulfilling the word that Joseph told the children of Israel. And now the children of Israel were able to come out of the land of bondage because God is a promise keeper. Thank you, my viewer. I just want to encourage you. This is my point. Let us not forget the goodness of God. Sometimes we can be blinded. Sometimes we can be in that state that God has done nothing in our, in our life. Why am I suffering? Why am I going through this? Why is this happening to me? I want to tell you, my viewer, that we are more than conquerors. I always tell, I always tell people, and it's in the Bible, that this Egyptian you are seeing, you will never see them anymore. Praise God. This Egyptian you are seeing now, that's what God told the children of Israel. The Egyptians you are seeing now, you will never see them again. The situation you are in right now, it is hurting you. You are being pressed. It's like you are being pinned down. It's like things are not in your favor. God is saying that that is situation it's just a matter of time. You will never see it again. Glory to God. And may God bless you so much. And thank you for listening to me. Amen. Thank you so much, Moses. Um, great talk. Uh, just something I wanted to share. The psalmist wrote, for he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Psalm 33 verse 9. The Lord is true and his promises are sure in Revelation 3, 7. I think John just had a couple of things to add as well. Mm. Thank you very much, Moses. Hopefully we've all been inspired by your talk. I just wanted to come back to that scripture you mentioned in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8, um, because, again, we lose some of the, the real meaning in the translation but in the English, it says, you know, when Paul was saying, we are perplexed, but we're not in despair. If you look at the original words, what it's saying in the original Greek is, we have no way out, but we are not in no way out. In other words, it's saying, listen, our situation seems to be impossible, that we, we can see no way out, but through faith, we don't see it that way. We don't see that we have no way out because, of course, in God, <laughs> there's always a way out. He creates walls. He creates openings. He creates ways out. So 
I thought I'd just like to share that because in our situations that you've been talking about, Moses, it can feel like that. It can feel like the walls are closing in. There is no door. There is no opening. There's a ceiling above us. There is no way out. But as Paul says, we're, we were in those situations where, where there was no way out, but we don't look at it as if there is no way out. Because at the end of the day, even if we stay in our same trial, our same hardship, until we die, and then the next waking moment, the Lord comes and we've got a mortal life, we're out. We're out. There is always a way out, even if it lasts that long. And usually, as you said, Moses, it actually happens a lot quicker than that. God does deliver us. And then tomorrow, next month, next year, we look back and we go, huh, hmm. that's that's over now. So I really appreciate your, um, your passion and sharing that today, Moses, um, you're in fine form, and may, may we be encouraged by that.